Hi, this is John Nichols from The Nation. Uh, we're here with Spencer Overton, who is a professor of law at George Washington and is the president yes. of the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies, which is one of the great historic uh, operations, for lack of a better term, looking at our politics, but particularly looking at the role that people of color play in our politics. You have been, in recent years, addressing in your writing Right. A fundamental question as regards campaign finance reform that doesn't get as much attention as it should. And that is that our campaign financing system, as it currently exists, as it defines who our president is, who our members of Congress are, who our local elected officials are, really has within it a bias against a, a huge portion of the American populace. Tell us about some of, the, some of what you found in your writing. Well, essentially when money is speech, John, then our politics is based on the distribution of wealth. It's based on the economy and property, right? And how money is distributed isn't always fair. It's not one person, one vote. It's not equal. It's not inclusive necessarily. And, and the thought is that there are several populations, Latinos, African Americans, who have less wealth than other communities and are not able to participate to the same degree. And you have some stunning figures on the accumulated wealth of some communities versus others. Right, exactly. So uh, white households have over 10 times as much wealth as Latino and black households. So, you know, it's different from income. Uh, wealth is, you know, the... Uh, the money you have kind of tied up in your home mm -hmm. in terms of the equity you've built. And, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to do things like make political contributions, send your kids to certain schools, et cetera, a variety of, of mm -hmm. things. And so the thought here is we really want a politics that's different where, you know, everyone can participate, you know, no matter what your economic background is, no matter what your racial background is. And if we think of Kimberly Crenshaw's great work on intersectionality, oh, yeah. boy, yeah. boy, when you get within communities, then right. you find people who are even more dispossessed, right. but yet are vital parts of, of our society. You think of African-American women, mm -hmm. and these are people who should be in the midst of our politics, right? right? They and, should be up front. And, and, and you know, they had the highest turnout in 2012 of any group, And right? definitional right. voters in the 2016 right. process. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yet, a, a real wealth barrier. Right, real wealth barrier in terms of participating in this wealth primary. In Running terms for of office. A couple yeah. of things, determining who gets to run for office, right, mm -hmm. but then also running for office themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, African-American women are doing a great job in terms of school and other things relative to, to males. In, in terms of candidates, elected officials, that's not the case. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And so when we talk about th this information becomes powerful and mm -hmm. important because as we talk about campaign finance reform right. and all the different ways that it might happen, mm -hmm. from a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United, right, right down to a local effort to you know, encourage uh, small donor uh, networks and right. make it easier for candidates to raise money uh, from their friends, from right. their associates. In all of these cases, we need to bring this information into the mix, right? right? We, no, need to, we can't just right. talk about campaign finance without bringing it in. Yeah, and, and you know, we can't just talk about faces in terms of who's elected, who's not, in terms of black faces, white faces, et cetera, right? And, and it's not just about voting in terms of who shows up to vote. You know, mm -hmm. those are really important. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to take them down. Mm -hmm. But in terms of who contributes, who has the means to contribute, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it's not just, it, part of it's contribution, but part of it is, hey, I'm having a house party and the candidate's yeah. coming over and the candidate's going to spend time with me and my friends Bringing and have into resources, the community, et cetera, yeah, right? Up. You know, it's yeah. a lot of it's part of, you know, just community building. Making right? democracy work in right. a real way. In a real way. I've written a lot recently about Shirley Chisholm's yep. historic campaign for the president. She presidency. was very involved in the Joint Center for uh, Political and Economic Studies as well. You know, it's a think tank that supports yeah. elected officials of color and also policy experts. And the interesting thing about Shirley Chisholm was mm -hmm. she came out of a, a, a neighborhood in Brooklyn. She had to fight the political machine. Right. She got herself elected to Congress, first African-American woman elected mm -hmm. to Congress. Mm -hmm. Four years later, ran for president of the United States. She didn't get elected. Right. But first woman to uh, break through in all sorts of electoral uh, venues, got you know a lot of delegate votes at the convention, mm -hmm. 
Now we think back on her as this breakthrough figure. Mm -hmm. But one of the things about her, when I, as I've written about her, is she was able to do it without a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Her campaign for the presidency in 1972 was a ridiculously tiny amount of money. Right. Her congressional races were almost no money. So she was able to do that human level connection. One of the things that has changed in our politics is that that human level connection that used to be able to get you a remarkably long way in politics mm -hmm. now has this whole national overlay, money flowing in from all sorts of different places and all sorts of different very wealthy people, sometimes through super PACs. And in a sense, we've lost some of the flexibility that the system had before the money came. We've had great progress as regards civil rights. We've had great progress as regards opening things up. But then suddenly the money comes and pushes back. Right. Now, I think that that is uh, right. And, um, you know, money's been in, in one way or another, since the beginning when we of think course. about, you know, who can vote, right? Mm -hmm. uh, landed uh, people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's been ebbs and flows over time. But we're at this unique moment, in part because of speech now, in part because of Citizens United and the court's recent decisions, where we have these super PACs and money is in such demand and such mm -hmm. large contributions, John, you know, 33, 34, $35,000 contributions, right? Mm -hmm. and, and one contribution, right? And how can somebody, you know, somebody who doesn't make $35,000 a year, right? Even imagine how, yeah, right. asking imagine, for $35,000 right. contribution. That's absolutely yeah. right. And, and, so and, 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 and yeah. part of it is the candidate being able to do that, but part of it is all of us as citizens and who's in the room, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, Hamilton talks about in the room where it happens, right? right? Being in the room. And unfortunately, folks of color and other folks who don't have resources, they're not in the room when decisions are made as a result of you know our system that unfortunately is only getting worse. And, and some years ago, uh, reformers talked about a Fannie Lou Hamer standard, right. which was basically that you know when Fannie Lou Hamer went to the 64 Democratic National Convention, talked about who she was, right. uh, a woman who came from you know tough circumstances, African American woman at a time when we had so many barriers, and. And she said, for democracy to work, the basic concept is it's got to work for her. Right. When it yeah. works for her, then it works for everybody else yes, all the way through. And that's something campaign finance reformers, good people, yeah. really do have to take in yeah. and understand. It, that's absolutely right, because in the past, a number of reformers have been kind of dry and regulatory. Mm -hmm. As opposed to participatory, it's been about, oh, if we just get the regulations right and the maze right. And, and there have been real divides. So, for example, when we had the debate over getting rid of soft money, mm -hmm. uh, we were really opposed to those folks who said, well, okay, let's raise the contribution limits from 1000 to 2000 so that we can get rid of soft money. That's a fine compromise. Yeah, that may be a fine compromise if $1,000 or a $2,000 contribution isn't a big deal for you, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're one of these people who can only afford mm -hmm. to give $50 or $25 or can't make a contribution, it's like you've just doubled individual contribution uh, limits and here, And double right? the barrier. Yeah, right? you double, double the, the barrier. Wall. That's and, absolutely right. And how many of us really, I mean, I, uh, truthfully, I think anybody listening to this conversation, except for the tiniest handful of folks, a mm -hmm. $1,000 contribution seems like a lot of money. Right, and it seems like a whole and, and such a tiny portion of Americans actually contribute to campaigns. It's a very right. small percentage. Right. Uh, in fact, I think even in some recent cycles, going down rather right. than up. Right. Uh, and so we really need to, to kind of pause and think about whatever reforms we do, how do we create right. a structure that encourages small donors and, and really at the grassroots? That's absolutely right. I mean, participation has got to be a part of this. You know. I'm all for public financing, but a public financing system where either people are giving vouchers or there's matching mm -hmm. funds for a small contribution, mm -hmm. this notion of widespread engagement. So as opposed to this notion where, okay, we're just gonna rely on money from a few folks and everyone else, you're just participants. You're just pawns for Spectators. us to mobilize Spectators. to get, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. just spend our money to mobilize you to yeah, the polls yeah. and determine who, who's gonna win. You by, watch by the that. ads. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, people being real participants mm -hmm. in the agenda setting, right, yeah. in the formation before Election Day is critical. And, and that's got to be a big principle we think about, that kind of participatory engagement from everyone. You know, that's got to be a principle that we, we have in terms of what campaign reform looks like. Not a spectator democracy. Right. Not a low-level participation democracy, right. but a full-spectrum full participation. Engaged of a variety of folks. That's absolutely right.
boy, we start on that, we might actually change the whole country. Yeah. All right. well, this is the start, John. All right, Spencer Overton, hey. thank you so much for your good work. Where do people, if they want to follow what you're doing, Joint, check it out? Jointcenter.org, jointcenter.org. Thanks so much, John. Thank you.